Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to deliver a base to the moon. Uh, we are not going to deliver any Kerbals with this base, but we will see how this works out. It's a sort of expensive test, but it'll give us an idea about how to deliver these modules. Uh, unlike with my previous base, I've got a lot of these deployable modules. Well, the, Oh, that's the actual landing gear. Uh, deployable modules slapped on ahead of time. So we've got this... No, uh, actually, I don't know how to inflate that inflatable storage module. I, I hope it works. But we can deploy a habitation module here. Mm, this one is an agricultural module. And this one is an inflatable workshop. And I balanced it out so uh, that habitation module is counterbalanced by this inflatable storage module. They have the same dry mass, and these two have the same dry mass, so it's balanced out. Um, so we'll see how that works. I do not know, but it'll look nifty on the moon, I think. Uh, so this is going to be delivered to the moon, I th uh, is my plan. And we have this sort of... I don't have the robotic parts for the orange, if you remember my previous uh, colonization series I had the orange but that had extendable arms with the engines on it uh, we don't have those pieces unlocked yet so I can't make a proper orange so I've just made this temporary sky crane and so it's got uh, my propellant tanks it's got a lot of stuff it's it's probably not as cheap as I could make it I could probably make a cheaper one uh, just for this purpose I wouldn't need the RCS for instance but I want to try and bring it back to orbit around the moon and reuse it. I don't know if it has enough uh, juice for it. Right now it is not fueled and neither is our transfer stage and that is because we are going to... Oh, and we really want to retract these right now. Um, because we are going to use the fuel that we delivered in orbit in the previous episode. So we'll have that those fuel tanks, well just one of those fuel tanks, dock with this transfer the fuel into this and then this will proceed. That allows us to use a smaller rocket to launch this. If we had, if we launched it fully fueled, the payload would be 14 tons heavier. Right now it's only about 15.5 tons, so quite a big difference. We need uh, double the payload capacity that we have right now. And that means that I can test a possible single stage to orbit system, which will be recoverable. And so this is what I've got here. We don't have the inflatable heat shield yet, which is what I really wanted. But right now we have this heat shield, 3.75 meter heat shield, uh, to protect the, the fuel tank. And then we have the skippers on the outside. Now I could have used the skippers to try and protect everything, you know, uh, have them closer in. Uh, but I wasn't entirely sure that would be safe. In, in realism overhaul, it definitely would not be safe. Uh, the fuel tanks tend to like to explode. In realism overhaul, the max temperature on the fuel tanks is like 800 degrees. Uh, here it's 2000. So maybe I really don't even need the heat shield. I don't know if I should do that on this test. Let's say removing the heat shield does give us a little bit more delta V. Hmm. Maybe I should just m make it simpler, huh? Yeah, I feel like... Well, hmm. So now I'm thinking maybe I should just try it without the heat shield first. And then if it blows up, we'll put the heat shield on. I won't change anything else about the design. We can directly put the heat shield back on if necessary. Uh, the problem is this tank is 3 meters. And we have... Uh, I could tweak scale the heat shield. But basically we have 1.25 meter, 2.5 meter, 3.75, and 5. Yeah, I guess it's just better to have the heat shield on. Let's try and recover it. The cost of the payload, if we take this off, and uh, this is the controller for the for the launcher. Uh, the cost of the payload is forty-eight thousand. The cost of the launcher is another hundred thousand. So we would like to get it back if possible. It's got parachutes. It's got air brakes. Um, hopefully we'll have some fuel left over to slow down. I don't know if we will or not. But that's the idea. So, yep. Yeah. Let's see if it works. Uh, first, we must absolutely make sure 
that there are no Kerbals on board. Let's see, they always sneak in. Okay. Let's let's go for it. Okay, well, uh, suddenly this extra planetary launch pads thing decided to uh, pop up. I don't know why. I'll just close it for now. Also, I just noticed we've got something poking through the fairing. It's this port uh, on the habitation module. Nothing else though. Okay, well, uh, let's 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 just go with it. Let's just go with it. Throttle up. SAS is on. And everything good. We've got a lot of supplies, so that's nice. We've got machinery as well. Some fertilizer. Okay, uh, let's go. Our expense of everything. Um, let's try and get rid of fairings. Maybe we can bring this down safely. I wish I had action group the parachutes. So yeah, obviously the gimbling was not good enough to handle the center of lift center of mass issues. Because, you know, the aerodynamics on the fairings is like that. Whatever the heck is going on with them there. Well, we are definitely going the wrong way around. With no fuel in the tanks, because... Why, are, why is there no fuel in the tanks? We used all that fuel already, wow. And no fuel in these tanks, because they were supposed to be refueled in orbit. We're not in the best position to have all this survive, but let's see what speed we splash down at. It'll be four meters per second. I don't think the air brakes are making much of a difference right now. Oh, this is a grave disappointment for us. Fortunately, we have a huge budget. Well, we'll have to slap on fins again. But that's going to hurt us uh, trying to return, of course. Okay. Uh... Oh, stop going, stop, 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 oh, okay, recover. Well, we, we can recover the payload at least. Uh, didn't recover any of the launcher, which was really expensive. Okay, well, uh, well, 51,000 funds recovered, but... Alright, uh, fins, I guess. Uh, oh, there's still some debris. Now, you might wonder why I'm always so reluctant to put fins on the rockets. Well, first of all, uh, aside from Soyuz, which has tiny little fins, uh, rockets don't have fins to control them. Um, they use uh, use engine gimbling, and uh, these skippers have three degrees of gimbling, so I had reasonable assurance that there would be some gimbal effect. Of course, in relation to the size of the rocket, the fairing here is quite large. Um, if we take that off, though, we see that the center of lift doesn't actually change that much. So it isn't actually the fairing. Uh, <laughs> so this there's just some weird aerodynamic stuff going on and you also have to take into account as I pointed out before that FAR doesn't actually put the center of lift always where it should be uh, I've had problems with that before so the reliability of that isn't a hundred percent so well right now it hasn't bothered to update the position of the center of lift see a uh, center of lift there okay Put these on center of lift. No, no, it's um, 
Yeah, it hasn't moved at all. So, so there's that. Uh, second of all, um, I always like to push the limits. Well, okay, so now I can't even tell whether this is going to be good enough or not. But, yeah, so pushing the limits is always something. Testing exactly what the boundaries are and how much I can get away with is sort of important to me. And third of all, of course, because if I'm going to be bringing this stage back down, uh, these these fins are going to be facing the wrong way. So I have to think about that as well. And if the center of lift doesn't bother to update and try and give me a proper read on things, I can't really predict whether it'll be all right coming back down. So all of these things are in my mind when I decide not to use fins and other considerations as well. But for now, I'm going to action group. I'm going to be uh, activate spawn. I want to be able to disable these as control surfaces. Is what I want to do. Um, I want to be able to use them as control surfaces on the way up, but then shut them off on the way down. It doesn't look like it's gonna give me a way to do that. That's annoying. Because uh, on the way, I guess I'll just have to turn off SES on the way down. Because SES will try and use. And we'll, we'll end up with a weird roll. Um, if I let it go, you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm also going to action group the parachutes. Arming them. Very important. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS on. Let's hope this works a little bit better. And... Ignition. Sense some initial wiggles actually. I'm gonna let it go straight up for a little bit longer, even though we don't have much spare Delta V to work with. Also, this time I'm trying to keep it a lot closer to the center of the prograde vector, not even just inside of it, right down the middle. Should be able to flatten out more now. Okay, stabilizing, separating the fairings. Okay, 100 kilometers. We'll save the rest of the fuel to finish it off. We won't have much fuel to deorbit. We'll basically have enough to deorbit, but not much to set ourselves down safely. We'll have to rely on the parachutes for that. We'll just end up wherever we end up. Okay, well, uh, that's an orbit. We'll have to rely on the fuel tank to rendezvous with this in order to refuel it and get it to where it needs to go. Okay, that's the decoupler. All right, separation. Payload is away. It has RCS fuel. It just doesn't have its uh, main fuel. So let's just uh, check that RCS is working. Yes, it is. Okay, well, let's try and bring... Uh, ooh bring this stage back. I'll just do a standard format return sort of thing. So around here we'll deorbit it. Well that'll definitely bring us down. Probably we could go a little bit higher than that. Let me turn it around and get a periapsis of 30 kilometers instead because our apoapsis is so low. The fins may decide to just explode on re-entry. That is a possibility. Let's see, um, well I guess I can manually shut them off like this. It's an annoying thing to do, but I guess that'll do the trick. Oh, KSP decided to crash in the middle of nowhere. That's talent for you. Okay. Okay, so we're back here again. Um, yeah. Well, I decided to remove Kerbal Alarm Clock because it's the only mod that I've uh, changed since I last played the game, and I've been having a lot of crashes, not just the one that I uh, showed just now. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. So temporarily removed Kerbal Alarm Clock to see if maybe it's 
part of the reason, but who knows. Alright, uh, separating the payload. RCS on, bring the payload forward, which will also push us into a different orbit so that we don't interfere with the launch stage. And now, the solar panels are not openable, so they're just there. Back to this stage. I don't know how the fact that the skippers are partly clipping it in the heat shield will, will affect things. We'll see soon enough. A little bit lower. Okay, let's go with that for now. Um, we do have this odd shape here. Wish I could get rid of that fairing. It'll probably explode anyway. Air breaks out. And I need to lock the control surfaces again. I guess that's the way to do it. Now one good thing is that the heat shield is at least partly covering the landing struts which might otherwise overheat. We'll see how that works. Um, things are overheating. Uh, it's the engines. Well, I'll keep the air brakes out just to uh, slow down faster so maybe we can hang on to the engines. But they are overheating right now. So, our, I think that's the landing struts or maybe it's the tanks the engines are connected to. Can't really tell with those things. This was not a steep descent, so this is about as gentle as I can make it. If the fins ablate, I'm not too worried. I would also prefer it if the fins all ablate like at the same time. For aerodynamic purposes. Uh, those are the engines that are exploding. Okay. The fins are actually more heat tolerant than the engines. That's not very helpful. I would uh, hope that the engines were a little bit more heat tolerant. Maybe it was the way that they were clipping into the heat shield? I don't know. The landing gear also died. So the things that we really wanted to have stay on, the landing gear and the engines, those are gone. So that's, you know, convenient and everything. Yeah, so not a good idea. Maybe that huge inflatable heat shield once we unlock it will be the thing to use. But apparently the engines don't survive so well. Full parachute deployment. Well, it's 4.3 meters per second for some reason. Alright. RCS on. So we were using our mop propellant to try and keep straight up and straight down. Let's see. Oh, it's tipping, it's tipping, it's tipping. Ah. Things exploded. Well, that's the controller, that's all the other stuff. Uh, maybe we should pick up the other stuff first. Not much recovered. Oh, well. Anyway. Back to, well, not back to our payload, back to uh, one of the orbiting fuel tanks to get it to our payload to refuel it. Okay, so I've decided to use fuel tank 2 because it is lacking in solar panels. The solar panels broke off, or uh, they're, uh, they're broken. And so it's best to make use of it now before it's like, well, I mean, it's electric charge wouldn't run out, but I just want to get it used up. Um, let's see, point to target maybe? We seem to be going away from the target. Uh, we're at a, I time warped so that we were at a close approach. Maybe I can fine tune that a little bit. Oh, that's pretty good. So we just need to retro burn to try and match it and that'll get us closer. So let's point at the node. somewhere between pointing at the target and pointing at the negative relative velocity marker. Here we go. 
Not much acceleration, just two twitch engines because we didn't want to carry heavy engines with us. Uh, it's not showing the empty liquid fuel tanks here. I, it has that problem. I don't know if that's fixed in 1.1.3. I still haven't up, uh, bothered to go through the updating process and get everything for 1.1.3. Uh, but in 1.1.2 sometimes it decides not to show resources and you'll note that it's actually a glitch because it's also not showing the stage only option. And that just sort of happens. That does look like a proper spacecraft, doesn't it? That looks pretty good. Okay, we are docked. And fuels are being transferred. It definitely won't take all the fuel that we have available. We'll have about uh, almost 700 units of liquid fuel and the equivalent of oxidizer left in this tank. Okay, that's all done. There's nothing else we need to refuel, so let's let us undock. This side can move away. We will control from up here. Okay, moon transfer plotted and better burn time says I should have already been going, so let's go. Plenty of delta V in the transfer stage to get us out there and into orbit around the moon. And then the the sky crane-ish stage will have to do the rest. Okay, within point two, let's see what that looks like. It's a crash course at the moon. Okay, well, that is fine. That is fine. We can manage that. Uh, yeah, let's just get over there. That's the moon right there. There's uh, There was a craft right there, I thought. Hmm. We are recharging. The solar panels are up here. Yeah, the caribou is pretty far down south, so let's get a uh, normal burn on. So that we have some inclination to work with. And actually, let's push this side of the orbit south. Mm, yeah, I think that'll be the best thing to do. Perhaps to discard the stage, we'll try and get a crash course for it into the moon and use the sky crane to bring us back up again. Let's see if we can do that. Well, not with its own fuel. I don't think I want to waste the sky crane's fuel trying to deorbit this. I'll just leave it alone, I guess. Well, dirtying space again. Separation. Get a little bit lower. Okay. Gotta bring the apoapsis down now. And then on the next run, we should be able to hit that target location. Looks like we're basically in line. I suppose we'll use MechJeb's landing guidance as a Helper, show landing predictions. It's probably obvious we don't have a whole lot of TWR with these four twitch engines. So we're gonna have to be a little bit careful. Well, one second to the suicide burn, so I better just keep this running. RCS on just in case. I don't think this sky crane's gonna have enough juice to get back to orbit.
All right, we are on the surface. RCS off. Well, let's get the sky crane away at least. Um, so, uh, control from here, right? Okay, mm we ready? Decouple, and it's controlling from the wrong craft. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, control from here. There we go. Actually, that is enough to get to orbit, I think. That's good. Barely, though. It'll have to be refueled up there, but that's... That's fine. Let's do the thing. I trust our Pioneer base will be alright for now, without us. Okay, that's orbit. So it is safely in orbit. It could rendezvous with a fuel tank if necessary. It's got mod propellant and the RCS, uh, the RCS and the fuel. Okay, back to the base. Let's see. Can I switch safely from here? Uh, it's upside down. Okay, now it's right side up. I hope that temporarily upside down thing is not an issue. Caribou and the other ship are uh, 300 meters away. That's not too bad. I mean, I didn't really want to uh, park this right at them. Might have been better, but I think this will be all right. Okay, so we've got the inflatable storage module, which I wasn't able to deploy in the VAB for some reason. And all the other things, uh, they, they could enter from this crew hatch or that one. That one? That one doesn't say it's a crew hatch, but this one, at least when I hover over it, it says crew hatch. Yeah, doesn't have a little crew hatch dialogue there. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a module. I mean, that's a solid sort of thing. Uh, now we have to think about how to get Kerbals to it. Yeah. And, of course, uh, they can drive around in the Caribou as well. And let me just take a quick look at... Can I go over there? Hold on. I guess I can just switch this way. This is the caribou. This is Alton 2. So, um, hmm. This was supposed to be the backup. This is supposed to be the emergency hab. It's a little bit close to the Pioneer base, huh? Come to think of it. We wanted it probably outside a render distance. Bad planning on my part. Got debris. We've got the whole Alton on the moon thing there. Okay. Anyway, but this was a very interesting test, and we we, de we deployed this with relative ease, I think, I guess we could say. It didn't cost that much. The ac this actual base costs 48000 We could easily see launching these to various locations, and we've got a lot of fuel in orbit around Kerbin to help out with this project. So, we could probably make larger transfer stages and deploy stuff something like this to Duna, as well as to Minmus, with ease. Okay, so let me go back to the VAB and see what I can do. Okay, folks, so twice now I've started to build a crew transport pod based on this cockpit. Uh, it is obviously supposed to be an airliner cockpit, but it's got a crew capacity of 4 and a mass of 2.75 tons, so that is a pretty good deal. The problem is, every time I got close to getting anywhere with the, with the crew transport pod, uh, the game crashed. So, uh, this brings back the battle days of the game constantly crashing in the colonization series. Uh, you know, the old colonization series, which is why I stopped that. But now the game has crashed during the recording of this episode at least five times. So, and so obviously it's not Curve Alarm Clock. I put Curve Alarm Clock back in. Uh, but uh, probably what's the first thing I'm going to do is I'll have to upgrade the entire series to 1.1.3 and see if that helps. It is not deleting the parts bug, that's not the bug that, uh, it, it just randomly crashes after a little bit of time. So that's distressing. I think I'll wrap up the episode here and we'll work on the crew transport pod in the next episode after I upgrade to 1.1.3. 
Alright, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.